One reason for the unpopularity of diesel cars has undoubtedly been their dirty image. They're associated with dirt and muck, whether it's coming out of the exhaust or whether you're putting it in the tank. If you spill this glutenoid stuff on your hands or your feet, the smell stays with you for days. Our petrol company's doing something about that, not least by providing these natty little gloves. And they're putting diesel pumps in a rather more civilised area, not just in a trucker's enclave. The question is, though, is diesel's yucky image environmentally justified? Diesels are said to be cleaner than even catalyst-equipped petrol cars, meaning less acid rain and less destruction of forests. They're fuel efficient, too, contributing less to global warming. But what about those smoky exhausts? Now, all that smoke is actually soot. A diesel engine produces even more than an ordinary petrol engine. That's one without a catalytic converter. Now, that not only makes your washing difficult to keep clean and it makes buildings absolutely filthy, but there's a nasty little rumour around that it causes cancer. Despite many studies, that link isn't yet proven. But the legislators and some of the manufacturers are playing safe. Volkswagen are leading the purge. Their new Golf Umwelt diesel is fitted with a turbocharger that reduces the amount of soot rather than aids performance. And a simple catalyst not only removes those diesel smells, but also halves hydrocarbon emissions. So why doesn't everyone buy such an environmentally sound car? Why don't you? Well, the trouble is that diesels, and the Umwelt is no exception, well, they're a bit slow. The Umwelt may be the cleanest liquid-fueled car in current production, but it takes 16 seconds to get from 0 to 60. One way around the problem is to fit a large capacity engine. This is the route Peugeot's followed with the 205, which gets an 1800cc diesel engine, giving petrol-style performance and much improved refinement. Another solution is to bolt on a turbocharger. With such a device fitted, the Vauxhall Nova 1.5 TD outperforms most of its petrol-driven stablemates. And manufacturers are up to the same tricks they've already used to extract more performance from their petrol engines. The Citroen XM turbo diesel has multi-valves, three per cylinder to be precise. Citroen also makes the best-selling diesel on the British market, the BX. Its 1,600cc petrol equivalent is just pipped at the performance post by the 1,800cc turbo diesel, which is not only a little bit faster than the 1.6 petrol, but it makes all the right green noises too. However, these are the only noises it makes that are right. Even this, perhaps the most refined and maybe even the best diesel engine in current production, is still desperately clattery when it's cold. But never mind that, never mind all the reasons for and against diesel. The main reason why this and other cars of its type are being bought in increasing numbers by the fleet market is fuel economy. The turbo diesel BX is said to do 9 mpg more than its petrol equivalent. With the Montego, the gap is apparently even more marked, some 18 mpg. Diesel cars should also be more reliable. According to the German equivalent of the AA, diesels are only half as likely to have a breakdown. The main reason is that a diesel engine doesn't have any spark plugs, so there's rather less electronic gubbins to go wrong. So if it's more reliable, more environmentally friendly and a deal more economical, surely that's enough to offset a few power and refinement deficiencies. Sadly not. You see, the problem is cost. This Nova 1.5 turbo diesel is £975 more than its petrol-driven equivalent. The Golf Umwelt, more reasonable, I'll grant you, but it's still £390 more. And the fuel isn't all that cheap either. In countries like France and Italy, governments impose a lower tax rate on diesel fuel, and that has led to much greater popularity for diesel cars. Oil companies say production costs of diesel and petrol are roughly equivalent. The price differences are down to the level of tax and seasonal changes in demand for heating oil. Because the pump prices of diesel and petrol are about the same in Britain, you have to do round about 70,000 miles before savings on fuel economy offset the extra cost of your car. Now, the only way you're going to get that break-even point down to a realm where taxi drivers aren't the only ones to benefit is if you reduce the tax on diesel fuel. Now, will the government do that? Well, they might if the environmental aspect were suddenly to become overwhelmingly important, but they'd have to if the European community told them to. 
So the future of diesel cars in Britain is really in the Chancellor's hands. If he reduces tax on March the 19th, sales will almost certainly boom. If he doesn't, no matter how good the cars get, diesel is likely to remain a niche market.